Ric Flair's last match. Sunday, July 31st at the Nashville Municipal Auditorium. Leading up to the event, we showcase Ric Flair's journey back to the ring in the exclusive docuseries, Ric Flair, The Last Match. As we unveil the star-studded matches that make up the card this Monday at 6.05 Eastern, we reveal the main event, Ric Flair's last match. Who will be standing across the ring from the Nature Boy? The world finds out this Monday at 6.05 Eastern. Ric Flair's last match .com. Oh yeah, this SmackDown show, and uh, did you see this show? Saw SmackDown, yeah. Not a fan of this show, really. Although Pat McAfee, Pat McAfee's great. Was great. Pat McAfee's great. He's one of those guys that like he can promo, he can wrestle, he can do announcing. He even did a ring announcing and did a good job. This guy is built for this business, and oh uh, yeah, I thought he did a great job. Yeah, he did a great promo, introduced Liv Morgan. Um, what in the hell happened in that match? Um, I really don't have an answer. They um, were on separate pages. They botched countless spots in this match, and it was really weird. Um, yeah, I mean, there was, there was definitely some stuff that was weird to watch. Um you know um wasn't uh was not a good match no then we had uh new day and the vicious viking raiders doing a segment where the new day is dressed as vikings and then uh viking I raiders come out to beat them up and then they get saved by of all people shanky and jinder mahal yeah, it's a setup because of uh the viking raiders had been had beaten both teams up so they kind of worked together that was I, weird. Yeah, it was weird. But I, I thought, I don't know. I thought it went the the interview by the new day. I thought went too long uh, before they pulled everything in. But I guess that was the way it was going to be. But uh, you know, it's like it's something that like on paper sounded good, and Kofi and Xavier Woods are good talkers, and they're really good at doing things like that. But I didn't feel it. You know, I'm watching it going like, like. It sounds clever, but it just wasn't working for me at all. And, uh, you know, at the end, everyone's dancing except for Jinder. He's not dancing. And, uh, you know, there you go. It's, you, you get uh, Shanky doing the dancing. Um, you didn't beat the Viking Raiders, and it was four guys that took them, you know, that, that, that did it. So, you know, you keep the steam on them. You know, I mean, if they would have... Um, it's, I think, too early to beat them. Although we're coming... We're, I, 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 you know, the way WWE books... I do think that, that beating them is probably happening sooner than later. Well, this is uh, similar to Raw, where, I mean, they just, there's so much talking to set up nothing. I mean, we had a long talking segment to set up the uh, Viking Raiders deal. Then we had a long talking segment with Lacey Evans, who actually thought did a good job as a heel. But still, she talked and talked and talked and talked, all to walk out. We never even had a match with Aaliyah. Which, I, frankly, I actually, was probably for the best, but... I actually didn't think the Lacey Evans promo was too long. I thought, it, you know, the people were, were very hot. Um, they were booing her a lot. Um, you know, her not wrestling is part of the storyline, so, you know, that was okay. And I don't think any, I don't think we lost anything by not having a match with Leah because it's not like that was going to enhance anything. Um, we had uh, Kayla... Well, it's, it's, my point is it's too long when you have a long talking segment that follows... A long talking segment. If well, we had it, a match in between or something, we well, didn't even really have a brawl. The brawl was like ten seconds, and then the guys and then Shanky danced. Yeah. Well, you know that's their new experiment on Friday nights. You know, we'll see if it works. It didn't. It did not appear to work the last two weeks because numbers were lower. But the new experiment is lots of talk. And very short matches. I mean, even look, the main event was seven minutes, and probably three and a half to three and a half minutes or four minutes were during commercial break. That's and that's true. the main event of the show. Well, we did have twenty minutes more of wrestling this week, so there was that because we got two longer matches. The Natty yeah, match. Yeah, we, we got. We, we, yeah, but they're they're they were um, you know a nine minute and a twelve minute, which were both interrupted by a commercial. So it was yeah, it was much more. The last week was like an extreme lack of wrestling. This week there was two matches, and then. You know, the quickies, you know, the Drew McIntyre and um, Rich Holland was three minute match. Not really much to go by, obviously. I guess 
I don't know if they're saving the Drew McIntyre Sheamus match for the pay per view. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of by, or just maybe maybe it's next week's TV. They keep because last it seems week, like it should be a pay per view match if it's the number one contenders match. Yeah, yeah. Um, at least this week, did they advertise? Because last week they advertised Drew and Sheamus, and then they did that really goofy, f- fake COVID, fake you know thing. This week they again advertised Drew and Sheamus, and then they just announced Ridge Holland as the opponent with no explanations. The announcers were, you know, not had an, you know, were just like we don't know what's going on. You know, it's like yeah. Last week, by the way, we had a, a, a fake COVID storyline. This week, we had fake monkeypox on. Uh, Corbin. Corbin was uh, refusing to go to the ring to uh, yeah. face Pat Well, they're Mac trying to be topical. Monkeypox. Monkey Not sure it's topical to make uh, light of COVID and monkeypox, but uh, they did. Then, uh, my big complaint for this show was this theory deal. So, theory comes down to the ring, and then we had a commercial, and then we had a recap of Brock Lesnar, and then we had an interview well, well, before, with Madcap before, Moss. Before Theory, we had this segment with um, Theory and Paul, which I thought was uh, very interesting because the idea that they are selling is that Paul, i.e. Roman, like they recognize that even if Roman wins, he's going to take such a beating that the guy can cash it in and win the championship. So Paul was you know, going like, you know, like, think of the box office. I mean, like, if we advertise the match and you can get the match, we could headline a pay-per-view with you and Roman Reigns. You know, just, you know, um, let's just set a time and a place for the match with the idea that, you know, he's trying to manipulate theory into not cashing in when Roman is hurt and just doing a regular match where pretty much everyone thinks that you know theory cannot beat roman reigns there's no reason to believe that he can except that this guy is going to go to war with brock lesnar and probably be left for dead and then it's going to be easy pickings you know because what do you figure it like the fi- the finish is going to be uh two guys go through tables or something and it's the 10 count and one of them gets up and falls down and the other one doesn't get up and it's going to be, you know, I think that's the what everyone is sort of semi-expecting from that finish. So um, they did that. And it was also interesting, the insider thing, you know, because Heyman went to uh, Moss and he went to Theory and he brought up how he was responsible for both of them getting their big break, which is actually a true story. Because if you remember back when Paul Heyman was in charge of Raw, well, Vince McMahon was in charge of Raw, but Paul Heyman was in charge of Raw in name. Um, two guys who he brought up um, were Theory, who they then sent back down because they didn't think it was ready. Um, and then um, Heyman handpicked him when um, God, somebody got hurt. Was it Andrade who got hurt? Somebody got hurt. Um, no, it was, or, or was it um, there was a tag team um, with Angel Garza? But anyway. He picked Theory to be the replacement, um, and then um, and then with Moss, you know, remember Moss came in, beat Ricochet. They were going to give Moss the big push, and then Moss, I think, had a, a family issue or something, and and went home. Have, probably having to do with COVID, but when COVID came in, um, he was gone. And um, I shouldn't say I don't know. I don't know the reason exactly, but it was a family thing, and um, you know, he kind of disappeared, but. But Heyman was going to give Moss a big push. He liked the guy's look, uh, liked the guy's, you know, athletic ability and everything. It was just in both cases, it was something um, with theory. It was that Vince didn't think he was ready and sent him back down. And with Moss, it was just, you know, the the timing thing. But, uh, you know, he did actually he did actually see something in both of those guys um, right away. Well, like I said, they hit Moss, they hit uh, Theory's music, and then we had one, two, three, four, five, five segments before he actually began wrestling Madcap Moss. So if you were there in the building, you sat, you saw him standing in the ring in the dark for 18 minutes before the match started. 
that's well, got to yeah, be a they, record. But they play the they play the backstage stuff though. Well, they do, but he's standing in the middle of the ring in the dark for eighteen minutes, waiting for that stuff to finish playing. Well, he might be walking around, but I know what you mean. Yeah, Golly. It's, then it's, they go eleven minutes to a DQ. Yeah, that was even better. And then they uh, continued on afterwards, where uh, Sami Zayn comes out in a sling, and he's there to distract. Uh, theory so that the Usos can come down, which distracts him, and then Moss throws him into the post. So Theory had about uh, 45 minutes of television time on the show on SmackDown. And not all of it was uh, good. And then Angelo Dawkins, Jimmy Uso, seven minutes. Angelo Mostly Dawkins beat him when... Uh, uh, His shoulder was up. Yep, they had the did. shoulder up finish again. Yeah. So uh, Jimmy Uso, they cl- they complained that the shoulder was up. That, of course, plays into the pay-per-view where uh, Montez Ford's shoulder was up. And uh, then Adam Pierce came out and said, no one wants to lose because of this bad officiating. So we're going to get so we're going to give you an inexperienced official. <laughs> so they announced of all people. And it's funny because the way uh, the, the, the announcers are just like, oh, my God, nobody woke up this morning thinking it would be this person. Like, this is awesome surprise because no one expected it. It's like, of course nobody expected Jeff Jarrett. Well, what the hell work. is Jeff Jarrett the referee for? He does work for the company. And well, Pat yeah, McAfee but it doesn't actually make goes, any sense. Pat McAfee even goes senior vice president of live events. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he is. He's the he's the guy who's putting these live events together. Yeah, well, nothing now. against the guy, but Jeff Jarrett. And then the fans were just like, huh, Jeff Jarrett. All right. It's a name. You know, he I mean. Politely applauded. Yeah. But we're well, the, the deal is the deal is it's Nashville. You know, from a national audience standpoint, whatever. But it's Jeff Jarrett, you know, again, you know, the Jarrett family in Nashville goes back um, 55 years, you know, and I mean, Christine even further, but she was not a public face. But Jerry, you know, um, and then Jeff would were part of that market for wrestling forever. So it's, you know, I mean, I can see for the Nashville market and he can go do promotion. They got, still got a lot of seats to fill. Um, I, I get it. I definitely get it. Um, I don't know if this is just a one timer or they're going to introduce him as a regular character, but I was very surprised when they announced Jeff Jarrett that he didn't come out. I figured, you know, he was going to run in and, um, you got to hold off that big appearance, Dave, save it, save, save it for Nashville, huh? I guess. I don't know. I got next week, right? Yep. We got, uh, one more week of shows. We got, uh, well, actually, uh, we got two weeks of shows, you know, because it's the, not till the 30th. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.